We are now ready to uh, determine chain length. Uh, the housing cables all hooked up. Front derailleur height is set. Uh, there's a couple different methods to do this. They end up at the, uh, the same place. Uh, a practical method is to determine the chain length from our largest front chain ring and compare it with the chain, the largest sprocket in back. Make sure that we have enough chain to shift to that combination. So our large, large method here, we're going to add an extra inch, which is two rivets. Two extra rivets is one inch of chain uh, to ensure that we're able to, uh, to make that shift without damage to our, uh, to our derailleur. So to do this, we're going to use our cable and shift up to the large ring but we're not going to shift the rear. So we're, we're simply going to lay this chain in, not connect it right now because we know our chain's not the right length, so we're not, we're not going to push any rivets in or out uh, just yet. So the largest, largest would be like so, as if it were a one speed. We could join right here. Well, that's too short, we have to go one, two. Two more rivets would be here. Uh, that's, that's an additional inch, and that gives us enough bend in our rear mechanism to, uh, to allow that shift. Uh, so we, we do want to uh, allow that combination so we don't, uh, don't damage things if we do get in that gear. Uh, this is the uh, two by 10 system, and that certainly is, is a gear that we might, uh, we might be using. So right there, let's hold that position there. Uh, we're going to cut off one, two, three, that fourth one right there. That's where we're going to shorten our uh, shorten this chain. A second method to determine uh, chain length on, uh, on bikes is to, to do it mathematically. And uh, we can consider this a, uh, similar to an industrial drive train, and that's where this formula has come from. Uh, there's a certain distance from the center, the rear cogs, to the center of our front cogs. The chain must make that distance twice, must wrap around half of this, and we have to add, we have to add that extra inch uh, to, to make sure we get the, through the derailleur pulleys. So uh, this, uh, this formula uh, is described on the Puck Tool website in the uh, chain uh, how-to section, and uh, there's a rigorous uh, equation and a simple equation when the cogs are very similar in size like this the simple equation works uh, works quite well so to to do this as an example here we measure from the rear stay the uh, center of the axle to the front here, and this one luckily is uh, 18, 18 inches. Uh, it, if it was off there, we would uh, round, uh, we would do the eight, closest eighth inch uh, and then do our rounding at the end. We can only shorten a chain by one inch increments. Uh, you cannot shorten a chain an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, so um, we can do our rounding at, at the end. So if we have 18 inches, sprocket to sprocket, so 18 times two, we'll have 36 inches from the, 18 from the top, 18 from the bottom, 36 there. Our formula says take our largest sprocket, divide by four, and our largest chain ring here, and divide by four. Well, the math is easy again. This is 36 divided by four. That's nine inches of chain here. This is 36 as well, nine inches of chain here. So we have uh, our 36 inches plus nine, plus nine, 54 inches, but that's a one speed. We do need the extra inch. So that's 55 inches of chain in, uh, in our scenario here. If we go over and we measure our chain, we start at, uh, at one end here, hold the tape measure even. 55 inches would be right here. 
one, two, three, four, that fourth rivet once again. So uh, it comes out, comes out the same. So um, just two different methods, but the practical method, uh, when in doubt, always a good one to use. Simply wrap it large to large. So I'm going to cut that fourth rivet. So now the chain is shortened to our correct length. Uh, we're going to return the front derailleur back down uh, to the smallest cog to relax tension on our system. Uh, we are ready to uh, install. We're going to uh, put a drop of, of lubricant on our uh, connection rivet. This is the uh, special connection rivet. We're using the Shimano chain today. Uh, this is an asymmetrical chain. We see no logos here. And we know that companies like their logo facing the customer, so we're going to have this facing outward. In the uh, Shimano design uh, for the 10 speeds, they prefer to have the outer plate be the first one to strike the cog. So we're going to route this one over behind. There we are. And now we will feed this up, 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 and forward through our stays between the front cages onto the small cog. And this is where we'll join. It's a little easier if we just disconnect entirely. We can relax that, that tension quite successfully. To, uh, to make this easier, easier to join. In my case, I'm going to shove the rivet from the outside toward the inside. So, take our chain tool, engage the rivet, make sure things are nice and straight and then we drive, drive that in. It goes in with resistance and the connection rivet will now pass through the back plate. We will feel ah, a nice give. We stop right there. So the connection rivet's properly pressed. We can take our tool, snap off the little extra piece. Link feels smooth and nice. So, that chain length is set, uh, time to move on and uh, adjust some limit screws.